Hey everybody. So today I'm coming at you from the maker space here in downtown Salt Lake City called Make Salt Lake. Great place. We've got a membership here. I pay about $250 every six months to have a chance to come in and use all their tools and machinery, including their X-Car CNC machine. Um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. I'm still figuring all this stuff out in Fusion 360 is what I'm using. But uh, yeah, so let me walk you through. We've got, uh, we've got my laptop here, okay, that I've been using with Fusion 360 to go through. And I've got a, um, I'll show up here on the screen. I've got a picture of the play field that I've uh, modeled out in Fusion 360. And then we switch across to the manufacturing tab for CAM and it shows all the tool paths we've got set up. And yeah, did the final tweak the other day. We're gonna do a final test cut today. Um, everything should be all lined up perfectly for the inlanes and the flippers and all that. Now, um, I'm gonna be sharing this file out with you. The one thing you need to keep in mind, I have this design with my specific metal ball guides that I got off from Marco Specialties, I believe. Check my bomb sheet. Um, they're not the common plastic ones. I'll probably go back through later on and do another version of the file that has those more plastic inlanes that most Sterns and other machines are using. The spacing on those um, uh, on the post holes for those are a little bit different. So if you download this um, file, you'll be able to use it. But if your own inlane guide, you might need to adjust those um, those holes a little bit. If you have questions about that, hit me up. There's a gazillion YouTube videos out there showing you how to use um, Fusion 360 to move things around. Um, but we'll get you squared away. Feel free to reach out to me. Um, yeah, what else? So, yeah, this is the um, the table over here we're going to be cutting on, right, with the, with the router that's all CNC um, controlled through this controller. Talk to the machine. I went through Infusion 360, as you saw. We got all of our, our paths. I've got it on a thumb drive then, exported out as G-code, which is what um, Xcarve's Easel software uses. Easel is a really uh, simple thing. It's one thing I like about Xcarve. Um, the software is like brain dead simple to get you set up, get everything set to where... Um, your z-depth and everything set up so you don't go through the table anyway you follow those instructions you load in the different files and i've got five of them here you might be able to see me switch through them but i've got five separate paths for the different types of cuts i'm doing for the pocket holes for bores for slots um i got a 3d um, pocket that's happening as well for the shooter lane i think i've got a nice path for the shooter lane that's one i'm not sure about um, i'm still tweaking but everything else should be set up for us so anyway we're gonna get in we're gonna start cutting um, we've got two boards. You always want to have a separate waste board underneath the main one you're cutting so you don't screw up um, the top of your CNC machine. At least that's how the x is working. Um, it's got these fun clamps we're going to use. I came up and I 3D printed this little little corner jig here. At least for this not being my dedicated machine, other people are using it. And just the fact, the way it gets set up. I had a hard time making sure that every time I got my piece of wood set up exactly in the right spot and that the router bit um, was you know that drill bit was always exactly in the corner of my piece of wood so you have to kind of like eyeball it yeah so i got this little jig put it there the wood gets put into this corner and then the router bit comes down and gets put up right against this snug also that way i'm just consistently always getting my zero set the same so hopefully this can be fairly reproducible again it's not like manufacturing um, production line level but it's gonna be good enough to get pretty consistent results for what we're needing to do um, anyway, I've got um, some people are asking all the 3D files. You're going to start seeing different things I've been 3D printing, different jigs and different clamps and things like that through my videos. They're all going to be up on my Google Drive, um, accessible to all of you to be able to go through and grab. I don't quite have it organized yet, um, but I'll get that organized here in the next week or so. Um, if there's anything you need in the meantime, just, just hit me up on Messenger or through Instagram and I'll send you a link. Okay, no big deal. All right, so I mean, that's pretty much it. If you have any other questions about it, let me know. This is just going to be kind of a time lapse from here on out, top down view, letting you go through and see it, do it cuts, and then we'll take it home and I'll actually get my lane guides and my um, flipper mechs all installed. We'll double check that everything is square with the flippers and if all that's all set to go, we'll get it uploaded and you guys can enjoy it. Okay. All right, here we go.
get some pretty good lines here. There's some debate about whether the flipper should continue and almost kind of a straight line there, or if it should have, you know, come up just a, just a smidge, or even in some games, if it should have just a little bit, you know, goes away. So an interview recently with George Gomez talking about Deadpool and about the way he set those up, had just a tiny bit more snag, I think, than what, than what the flippers traditionally have in order to help make sure that, you know, they're hitting all the shots, like the snick shot and everything else that they wanted to hit for sure. So when in doubt, I think you do kind of the, what I believe Steve Ritchie is the one kind of known for this kind of the Steve Ritchie way, have this line come down and pretty much just continue exactly with the top of the bat. Okay. And only adjust it beyond that. If in case for some reason you have some really crazy shots that need you to adjust it. And even then you should barely be adjusting it like a millimeter, a millimeter each direction or so. It pretty much needs to stay just about right there that we have the right amount of cradle by the right amount of openness to be able to hit shots across the field. Yeah, but I think we're good. All these have lined up really well. I think we're good. I'm gonna put this file up online now. Um, so those of you who have asked for it, you can have it, it's ready to go. Um, I'm also gonna repost the link to John Marsh's um, Fusion file that you can use to actually cut out your cabinet in case you don't find a donor cabinet from an old machine like I did. Um, you'll need to be able to cut one out. And so there's a file you can use as a guide um, to see and see it or even just get all the measurements off of it and cut it all yourself like by skill saw and table saw. Up to you. Um, but yeah, so this was another just kind of like throwaway board. I've been doing so much testing, so much waste boards. I just did, did on the other end. So I'm actually going to head back um, tomorrow morning, I believe, with one of my good pieces of wood and go through and do a full cut of the full lower third with all the switch cutouts, the trough. I've also got a cut I've been working on for the shooter lane. Okay, that's in this file also. Um, go ahead and download it now. I'll let you know once I have a final version with that shooter lane with the nice... Um, the kind of that rounded cut out of it at the angle, you know, the ball comes up. I forget what you call that. Anyway, the groove for the ball in the shooter lane. Um, I'm still working on getting the one, that one set up just right in Fusion 360 so it gets the right edge on the lip with, uh, with my bit. Again, I'm still learning it. So anyway, I'll let you know what, what's that, once that is updated with it, but the file is ready to go. You can take it and start using it. Again, remember, these, um, these ball guides, these inlane ball guides I have are these metal ones I got from Marco Specialties. They're on my bomb. Um, I'm almost positive like this this corner hole here in here They do not line up in the same position with those plastic inlaying guides that are used a lot more commonly on stern um, I'm gonna be ordering some of those here in the future and I'll go through and I get an updated file for you That has a, a proper placement for those holes But honestly start with this and then I'd say go through and do a test cut on a waste board And then all you need to go through and do is then lay down your plastic piece on top of this and mark out where that specific you know those specific holes are Okay, and then just do measurements from the edge of your board in, okay, and then from the bottom up. And you can go inside Infusion 360. You can take the existing holes I have and you can move them, each one individually, until you get them exactly where you want for your own ball laying guide. Um, if that seems too, too crazy, overwhelming, you know, you haven't used Fusion 360 before, then you can wait until I get one updated with those plastic ball guides. I'll have a separate file for each one. But for now, um, yeah, the slings, the switches, the flipper um, bat placement, everything else for the GI is all good. So I think we're ready to go. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. Different little shot today. Different video. A little more around the CNC infusion. I hope it was interesting. Let me know if you want me to dive in even more. I kind of did, did like, a, like a time lapse for everything I did in Fusion 360. If you want me to sit down and walk you through a little bit more as an actual tutorial in Fusion 360, let me know. Um, I'm happy to do that. Again, there's other ones out there you can find, but they're not like pinball specific. So uh, up to you. Let me know in the comments. I'm happy to take some time to go through and do that. Otherwise, the next thing is to get back on that staircase. Um, a good comment was brought up about like what's going to happen with the ball is hit so hard that it doesn't really have time for the magnet to catch it through my play testing with about um, three quarters power on the flipper i wasn't really having that problem but I actually ran into another problem with balls sticking to each other so but i think i've got a solution for that so next video we're going to run through all that get the staircase hooked up onto a play field and with everything else that's going to go around i think we need a few more pieces of that assembly to make it work so all right. Thanks, everybody, again. Like and subscribe. Um, let everybody else know what we're doing. And if you haven't started making your own pinball machine yet, why not? Come on. If I can do this, anybody can do it. All right? We're getting there. We're, we're getting to some really good, um, really good places here in the, in, the, in the process. And come along for the ride. Why not? Make your own. Okay? Talk to you later.